Rock Up Podcast is brought to you by Blackbird Tattoo and Piercing. 300 South State, Clearfield, Utah. Go there, get tattooed, get pierced. I'm going to be up there this Saturday getting tattooed. I'm not exactly sure what I'm getting tattooed. I have a good idea, but we have several tattoo projects that we're working on for me. Um, anyway, stop in and say hi and get tattooed or pierced. Thank you all for tuning in to Rock Up Podcast. Um, I appreciate it. Love having you guys here with me, listening to my rants and my bullshit, and um, me playing uh, some pretty fucking uh, tits metal music for you. You guys can always contact me at rockuppodcast at gmail.com and on all the social media bullshit, mind control fucking things. Um, just type in Rock Up Podcast and look for the skull with the cowboy hat. So, yeah, I guess without further ado, let's start the fucking show. genocide reno's very own ritual genocide the song is lightning insurgents they had a release this year this uh, past uh, i mean not this year last year ascension death mass and um you know they are uh, quickly becoming uh regular rotation in my music playing lately i think they're fucking great so definitely check that shit out Go support those guys. 
So yeah, what happens? What happens at the end of every year? It's fucking January now, right? End of December, without fail, everyone's gonna come out with their best of best of releases of the the year that is ending, right? Everyone came out with the best of twenty nineteen, and um, I had one written up. And now that it's January twenty third, it seems a little bit silly to do it now. It's like I missed the uh, I missed the boat. I missed the uh, drop. I don't know, man. I fucked it up though. Dropped the ball on that shit. So I'll just give you them real quick off the top of my head. Worsen, okay. That was the number one album that I played a lot of this year. The Worsen. Um, former members of um, Young and in the Way and uh, I don't know a few other bands, but yeah, Curse the Witness, Curse the Witness Life or whatever. Um, that one, uh, Profantica had a really killer album this year, and then you know, thirty six later years later, Possessed came out with an album, um, and you know, it's hard not to you know immediately just shoot that one right to the top, but. You know what? It's kind of a given, right? It's kind of a given that Possessed would be like fucking number one. So I'm going to give it to Worsen instead um, because it's not so obvious. And, you know, they're not like the fucking, you know, death slash black metal legends that Possessed and Celtic Frost were. You know what I mean? They're more the little guys. So... I give it to them. Anyway, um, Diocletian and Ritual Genocide also had releases this year. Both excellent, excellent bands. I highly suggest you check those motherfuckers out if you haven't already. And I'm sure most of you probably already have. But I will give you this. A band that fell off like a motherfucker this year. Um, Blood Incantation. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Um... They went from like kind of a black and death death sound to like this weird prog rock metal weird shit. Talking about aliens. Um, fuck man, I sound like the intro to that Outcast album, but um, fuck, it's it, I was not feeling that shit. And all the people in Salt Lake City going to see them play with uh, Immortal. And fucking making asses of themselves. Putting tin tinfoil hats on their fucking heads. Like, how retarded can you get, dude? That's why I avoid people like the fucking plague. Cause holy shit, man. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Anyway. Um, yeah, man. That band fucking fell off like a motherfucker. So instead of Blood Incantation, go check out Black Bud Invocation. Much better band, heavier shit, way more pissed off. Go check that shit out instead, okay? Because that band's fucking, they're tearing it up. Not like Blood Incantation who fell the fuck off. Um, and fuck all of you people for uh, who are getting mad because I'm talking shit on Blood Incantation. I didn't write their fucking music for this album, and that shit fucking was not good at all, dude. They should be fucking opening for Rush with that bullshit, dude. Fuck that shit. I'm not feeling it at all, but that's just me. And while I'm bitching about things, um, everyone was like, fucking, uh, Once Upon a Time of Hollywood was a great film. No, no, it wasn't. That revisionist history that Quentin Tarantino keeps doing, dude, fuck that. That's fucking dumb. You're lying. You're insulting the victims of that crime. You know what I mean? You're insulting Sharon Tate by doing that shit. That stupid revisionist history. Yeah, I get it. It's melancholy at the end and sad and stuff because, like, sh oh, spoiler alert, yeah. They, the f it's a revisionist history. It's not what happened. But I'm a fucking, like, big fan of history. Even if shit's gruesome, I want to know what happened. You know what I mean? I want to see it, like, happen and, like, know that it's following... You know, what actually fucking happened from, like, the crime and shit. I don't want to see a fucking revisionist history. I don't want to watch Hitler get shot in the face in a fucking movie theater. And I fucking... You know what I mean? I, don't, I didn't want to see Sharon Tate and her friends get murdered. But I know that's what happened. And I think it's a fucking insult to, like... Not tell the truth. 
anyway, other than like the storytelling in that thing and the fact that there was not an actual plot, it was just like a series of events that had no arc or anything like that. And like shit storytelling because it's Quentin Tarantino writing the screenplay. He wrote it, so that's why it sucked. Um, everything else about the movie was great. Fucking cinematography, the acting. He always has a killer soundtrack. I used to say the formula for Quentin Tarantino making a movie was like good actors, um, really good dialogue, a kick-ass soundtrack, and then like a weird either torture or rape scene. Go back and watch all of his fucking movies and they're going to have at least one of those things. Except for like the last one. The last one or two. Anyway. Um, maybe Jackie Brown. Was that his? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care. Once upon a time, once upon a time in Hollywood. That movie was fucking bullshit dude. The acting was good because there were good actors but yeah man fuck that fucking movie
Hell yes, that was Hexenkreis. Um, hey, so about that band you just heard, they're playing a show. Um, January 29th, Wednesday, January 29th, at the Metro Music Hall with a band called Moon Wizard on the, the fucking, on a, okay, now don't fucking misunderstand me, on a ghost tour, okay, it's not the pop metal band Ghost, okay, it's not him, it's G-O-S-T, which, I listened to them today and they're kind of a dark wave, I don't know, if, if you're kind of into that stuff, I, I enjoy listening to it, I can't listen to it all the time, but um, yeah, they're playing that show. And um, they're a local band here in Utah, here in Salt Lake City. And uh, you guys should really go check out Hex and Christ. I don't know if I'm going to make it because it's a fucking Wednesday and uh, uh, Honky has to work on Wednesday nights. But um, yeah, man, you guys should go check that shit out. Um, what was it? Wednesday, January 29th? Yeah, at Metro Music Hall. So go check that band out. <clears throat> Sorry for clearing my throat just there. I'm trying really hard lately not to, like, burp, clear my throat, or sniff. See? See how I just sniffed just there? I'm trying not to do that shit anymore. Because when I go back and I listen to all these shows that I do, and one thing that bugs me is, like, when... And and it's all me. It's all, like, my fucking fault. Whenever there's a guest on, they're always like, oh, shit... You know, I accidentally got a burp or, you know, fart really loud or sniff or something or sneeze. You know, it's always me that's just like, ah, oh, go ahead, fucking go for it, you know. You're amongst friends. But, um, like, lately I've been listening back to some of these old shows as I'm getting closer and closer to number 50. Right? This one is uh, number 44. But as I get closer to 50, I'm getting more, like, in my groove. Of how I want this show to go. And it's not like any other. Fucking show I know of. Of like a regular. Po- of like regular podcast. This is like my design. So. Like. And I want to perfect this. I don't know what it is. I just want to perfect it. I like. I want it to be listenable. To me. So when I go back and listen to it. Like. I'm not annoyed by. Things that I do myself. Um. I don't know, it's hard to explain, I guess, but yeah, I'm trying to perfect it in my own mind on how the show should go. So, yeah, man, I've been trying not to, like, sneeze or burp or sniff a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck, man. It's it's not easy, because you don't even think about them when you do them. I mean, at least I don't. Okay, so speaking of, like, uh, music news and stuff I want to help promote, uh, Dissonolith. Um, the band, obviously, um, they, their, uh, album, Modern Crusades, uh, sorry, Modern Crusades Against Abrahamic Scum, um, is to be released on, uh, the Veni, Vidi, Vicky, Vinladic, Werewolf, also Doomsday Elite, and Lower Silesian Stronghold on CD. So, you guys can pick that shit up on CD. Without with uh, through those uh, you know record labels whatever, and then they'll have the Age of Exalted Intolerance demo uh, as like a bonus track on that shit. So, Killer Band um, definitely support that and uh, check that shit out because they are the they're they're pretty fucking great man. Yeah, it's a uh, LD who played in Grave Hill and I don't know. A billion other fucking bands. Um, Odium Totus, that's his, like, uh, kind of his main uh, pet project there. But this and all, too. So, um, definitely support that shit. And, uh, you can buy it on a compact, on a CD now through, uh, those, uh, those businesses that I just mentioned. Also on music news, fucking the band. <laughs> uh, fuck, man. Fever, right? The band Fever. They. I don't know any band that gets banned from, like, more social media, fucking, like, streaming things. They are, you know, 
if you're pissing people off, if you're pissing that many people off, you got to be doing something right is like my thinking about it. I like Fever. I like Fever very much. I like their music first and foremost. But I like them that I like that they do not give a fuck. They are not kowtowing to anybody. They are not playing nice with fucking anybody. Um, They're putting their shit out there. And if you don't like it and most people aren't going to like it, they could give a flying fuck. And I don't know, man, something about like the war, um, like historian in me or, you know, just kind of my take no prisoners i don't give a flying fuck about what people think anti-society redneck um ethos in me but there's just something that resonates about that with me with like a death metal band um they do not give a fuck and um that's what i really really fucking dig about this band um so i'm gonna play their shit Okay, they've been removed from everything. You can barely find their music anywhere unless you go to like uh, certain like record labels and shit. I mean, fuck, man. Yeah, like they have a real fucking like a black. They're uh, on the fucking blacklist of uh, all the sh- all the like bands and shit. Fever's fucking probably like one of on in like the top 10 so uh so me being me um you know looking to piss people off and agitate and fucking instigate dude um i'm gonna fucking play their music so here's the wagner brigade by fever
Fuck yes. Fucking fever, dude. I dig that band. I think their music is fucking badass. And, like, you know, I kind of got off on a tangent, and I'm about to get off on another one. But, like, in this age of, like, safe spaces and everyone's, like, included and we all love each other, it's like the rebirth of the hippies, like, this fucking hand-holding this, like, facade of, like, you know, just uh, pussification and globalization of the world. It's nice to see a band that is willing to suffer the slings and arrows of all the uh, um, kumbaya fucking hand-holding motherfuckers, you know what I mean? It's it's just fucking refreshing to see that, see that shit. Um, they're playing a show in Chicago. I think they're playing a couple shows in the Midwest this year. Uh, go fucking look up Fever, buy shit, support that shit. I think that band is fucking great. Can't say enough about them. And yeah, man, I wish them all the fucking success. Uh, just plunging the goddamn knife into the heart of the SJW fucking revolution bullshit that's going on these days. Anyway, so Trump's being impeached. You know how that's going to turn out? Do you think, do you really think 20 Republican senators are going to fucking turn on the Donald? You got to get 20 of them. Do you think that's going to happen? Because it's either that or acquittal. What do you think is more likely to happen? 20 people to turn coat or an acquittal? Because I got my predictions about that shit. And I'm saying the smart money is betting on fucking acquittal. That's just me, you know. But boy, is that going to fuel the fire of conservatives across the nation to vote the Donald into another term. I really fucking think that. I think they are fueling a fire that they are just throwing gasoline on the fire. Instead of, like, really focusing on a candidate that could, um, you know, run against him and beat him, which is very unlikely just historically because most presidents who are voted into office go to terms. Uh, It's very rare, very rare that... um, they only serve one term. They almost always serve two terms. So, yeah, man. Just, I mean, just look at the history of it. That it's likely that uh, he's going to be president for another four years. Because, boy, are they playing a stupid game. It's like they've never cracked open a history book. It's kind of silly. Uh, the libtards, I mean, not the Repu- not the Republicans. Uh, not that I give a flying fuck. So, Royal Rumble's coming up. I'm very excited about that. Uh, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar! Is entering at number one for the Royal Rumble. God damn, that just made... And he's, they're pushing him being a heel even more. So, God damn, dude. Do I fucking like that guy more and more. I just like the heels. I don't know, like... It kind of coincides with, like, what I was fucking saying about the band Fever. Or, like, uh, you know... Did you ever watch horror movies and you, like, root for Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger to fucking kill everybody? I think that's just kind of my personality. Like, I always kind of root for the bad guy. Um, I like the villain. I just, I've always liked heels more. Growing up as a kid, um, Jake the Snake was the shit. And The Undertaker, you know, those were my fucking heroes. Because they were heels. They were the bad guys. Um, So, just fucking, like, the fact that they're, Pushing Brock Lesnar even more in a like a heel stance. Um, 
I fucking love it, man. I just love it. And of course, uh, fucking Bray Wyatt, The Fiend, mask made by the great Tom Savini, and just like his nightmare it like kind of approach of his character development. That guy can fucking develop the shit out of a character. When his time competing as a wrestler is through, WWE needs to hire that motherfucker on, have him write promo storylines and all kinds of shit for WWE because that guy's got a brain for um for writing and being a heel and character development. Because that shit's pretty much all him. All those promos that he wrote when he was like the weird cult leader. He wrote all those. So, yeah man. I know, some of you probably don't like wrestling. I fucking love wrestling. I've loved wrestling since I was a little kid. Because, oh, you fucking wrestling's fake. Yeah, so is your fucking uh, elections, motherfucker. But, like, they're huge motherfuckers. They're huge dudes. Big as fuck, who obviously lift incredible amount of weight, which, you know, who doesn't like that? Who doesn't like a, a big alpha motherfucker that can lift a ton, you know? Uh, and they're competing against each other in, like, this dramatic, kind of drawn-out, almost like a soap opera kind of thing for white trash. So, yeah, man, that fucking appeals to me very much. Oh, fuck, man. My left shoulder's fucked up. I don't know what it is. I think I have an impingement. I did overhead presses today, and uh, it did not go well. And I'm an old man, and I realize that, and I'm kind of of in pain. But that's okay. We're going to get over this. We're going to get through. We will survive the fucking nuclear hectopole. That was 
Goat Hex. They did a split with Goat Corpse. That was Nuclear Hecatomb. Hecatomb. Do they mean Hecabomb? I don't know. Hecatomb. All right. Whatever. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay? Fuck. I know. I said I wasn't going to burp or sniff or sneeze or fart or murder a prostitute on air. And I'm trying my damnedest not to. But sometimes these demons just be calling me. Anyway. Um, fuck 2019. That shit's over with. That's done, ski bitch. We don't need to talk about 2019. Fuck 2019. 2020. Here's some things to be on the lookout for. A band called Pill Riders. It's a mixture between um, Paul Wagner and um, uh, Bass Mahash Hosh. I don't know. I don't know how to say French stuff. It's like a dark country kind of album. So that's fucking cool as shit. That sounds badass to me. Also, Chalice Dungeon. Riley's fucking working on some new shit. I think he's working on a full length to follow up his single. Go Penis has an album coming out. I think it's a full length. And I think War Grinder is working on a full length as well. Um, Revenge is in the studio recording right now. If you guys follow those motherfuckers on Instagram or whatever, you can see... Uh, you know, that they're recording and they're in the studio right now recording some shit. And then also, I Hate God is supposedly working on a new album that will be released 2020. So, that's a lot of great music to look forward to. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I am. So, yeah, man. I think we'll fucking... Wrap it up right there with the Day Glow Morning. Thank you all for tuning in. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you later.